I'm extremely confident that level five or, or essentially complete autonomy will be with, uh, will happen. And I think it will happen very quickly. Um, I think at Tesla, we, we, I feel like we're very close to level five autonomy. I remain confident that uh, we will have the, the functionality for the basic functionality for level five autonomy uh, complete this year. Hey, I'm Steven and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to be playing a few clips from last night's World Artificial Intelligence 2020 conference in which Elon Musk spoke, revealing some details about progress of full self-driving and also some really fascinating information about Tesla's self-designed in-house artificial intelligence chip. So I'm going to play a few more clips, add a little bit of commentary where I think it's relevant. And by the way, just a quick FYI guys, the piano was not my choice. Deal with it. Let's dive in. Hey guys, if you'd like to help out the channel and get up to two free stocks, check out the links in the description to Weeble and Stake. Let's get back to it. I think there are no fundamental challenges remaining for level five autonomy. Uh, the, there are many small problems. Um, and then there's the, the challenge of solving all those small problems and then putting the whole system together um, and, just, and, just, and, and just keep addressing the long tail of problems. So you'll find that you're able to handle the vast majority of, of situations, but then there'll be something very odd. And then you have to uh, have the system figure out a train to deal with these very odd situations. Um, and this is why you, could, you, you need a kind of a real world situation. Nothing is more complex and weird than the real world. Uh, any simulation we create is necessarily a subset of the complexity of the real world. We're really deeply enmeshed in, <laughs> in dealing with the, 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 the tiny details of level five autonomy, but I'm, I'm absolutely confident that this can be accomplished with the hardware that is in the Tesla today and simply by making software improvements. Uh, we can achieve level five autonomy. So this is the same type of comments we've been hearing from Elon and Tesla for a while now. They're just dealing with the long tail. Let's say that Tesla's got 99.9% .9 of the full self-driving functionality nailed to a T. It's just that 0.1% and then that 0.01% and then that 0.001%. The kind of things that aren't likely to happen, but you'd rather not have your vehicle encounter them for the first time while somebody's not paying attention, not operating the vehicle and in a potentially unsafe situation. Imagine you're driving through the desert, there's a huge sandstorm and an elephant somehow has escaped from a nearby zoo and is rampaging down the highway. You don't want to be encountering that for the first time in your Tesla when it's out on its own, fully autonomous, driving for you, and it's never encountered a situation like that before. This is that long tail that Tesla's talking about. There's one in a million, one in 10 million scenarios and situations where you really, really, really need to have your vehicles out in the real world encountering just those edge cases, that one in a million, one in a billion type of situation so they can deal with that safely. This is where Tesla's at now. And this also is why it's so hard for Tesla to accurately predict when full self-driving will be done because they don't know what they don't know. Have you ever seen a tent just fly across the road? Probably not. Have you ever been through a swarm of bees in a car? Probably not. These things happen. The car needs to know how to deal with it before the event. So until Tesla has enough data out there, keep in mind their fleet is growing exponentially. So this problem is becoming exponentially closer to solved. Each new vehicle out on the road is sucking up data, training the AI to get better and bringing in those edge cases, those rare scenarios, but there's still work to be done. Now, personally, I think the way that Elon is wording this stuff now, he's less confident in when full self driving will be fully available than he was a year or two ago. Maybe he's learned there's a few more unexpected things. The unknown unknowns are now becoming known unknowns. I personally wouldn't be betting on full self-driving being done and released by the end of this year. Although Tesla is very close, it's just a little murky. It's kind of hard to tell exactly when this will be done. But rest assured, no one else has the data. Tesla will be first to solve full self-driving. And however long it takes Tesla to solve full self-driving, Anybody else hoping to compete, they're gonna to have to go through the same process unless they wanna license full self-driving technology and software from Tesla. Possibility. Otherwise, they're gonna to have to go through that same long tail of really unusual, unexpected, rare scenarios. I'm not sure I totally agree with dividing it into those categories, perception, cognition, and action. But if, if you do use those categories, I'd say that probably perception, it, we've made, if you say like, recognition of objects. We've made incredible progress in recognition of objects. In fact, I think it would probably be fair to say that uh, an advanced uh, image recognition system today is better than almost any human, um, even in an expert field. So 
um, it's, it's really a question of like how much compute power, how much, uh, you know, how many computers were required to train it, uh, how many compute hours, what was the efficiency of the uh, image training system. But in terms of image recognition or, or sound recognition and really any signal, you can say, say like generally speaking, uh, any any byte stream. Um, it, the, 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 it can can a, a modern AI system uh, bend things accurately with it for a given byte stream extremely well. To those who've been following the progress of machine learning and in particular perception, this won't come as a surprise. We already know that AIs have become superhuman at recognizing, for example, tumors in medical scans, absolutely decimating the accuracy of humans who've been trained over years to recognize this stuff. So this totally makes sense. Perception, not a problem. Cognition, this, this is probably the weakest area. If you say like, uh, is it do you, is, do you understand concepts and able, are you able to reason effectively and can you be a creative in a way that makes sense? Um, where, because where, you, you have to certainly uh, advance the eyes that are very creative, but they do not curate their, their, their creative actions very well. And so we look at it and it's like, it's not, it's not quite right. Um, it will, it will become right though. So to reference my prior point about artificial intelligence having superhuman abilities to perceive, for example, spotting tumors in medical scans with far greater accuracy than trained humans, that's all good and well. But while this is happening, the AI isn't actually understanding. There's no cognition happening behind the scenes. It's very good at getting a great result, but here, nothing going on yet. So guys, don't worry. It's not likely that your car is going to become fully self-aware one day as it's driving you along the highway and joins Skynet and then destroy the human race. Not for a while, anyway. And then action, sort of, I think maybe you think of like things like uh, games, uh, as maybe something part of the action part, part of things. Obviously at this point, uh, any game with rules, uh, AI will be uh, superhuman at any game with uh, an understandable set of rules. Like, it's essentially, any game below a certain degree of freedom level. So, really, that's say at this point, any game. There's, there's really, it would be hard, hard pressed to think of a game where if there was enough attention paid to it, that we would not make it superhuman, a superhuman AI that could play it. Um, and that's not even taking into account the faster reaction time of, time of AI. For a taste of how well artificial intelligence is able to reach superhuman levels of ability when the rules are very clearly defined, jump on Google. Check out AlphaGo. If that doesn't blow your mind, check out AlphaZero. And if that doesn't blow your mind, how about Alpha Star, which today is past Grandmaster status at StarCraft II, an artificial intelligence destroying Grandmasters at a real-time strategy game. Super complicated, but clearly defined rules. Project that forward. We've gone from chess to Go to StarCraft II. What's next? So in developing, in developing AI chips for autopilot, what we found was that the, the there was no system on the market that was capable of doing inference uh, within a reasonable cost or power budget. So, we, if we had gone with a conventional uh, GPUs um, and CPUs and that kind of thing, we would have needed several hundred watts, and uh, we would have needed to fill up the trunk with computers and GPUs and a big cooling system. Um, and it would not have been, it would have been, have been very, very costly. It would have costly, bulky, and, and, and uh, take up too much power, uh, which is important for range for an electric car. So we developed our own uh, AI chip, but the Tesla full self-driving computer uh, with uh, dual system on chips with the uh, 8-bit and uh, accelerators for doing the, the dot products. We still actually haven't fully explored the, the power of the Tesla full self-driving computer. In fact, we only, turned on the, set, the second system on chip um, partially a few months ago. So uh, making full use of the, the Tesla full side graphic computer will probably take us at least uh, another year or so. This is an incredibly important point, a microcosm of how Tesla addresses problems. They looked into the future, 
Realize the amount of compute that they would need to actually achieve full self-driving. Realize that the existing solutions in the marketplace today were inefficient. They'd use too much power, too much space. It'd just be a total waste. What did they do? They invented their own chip. And industry experts who saw this thing were blown away. It leapfrogged the best available technology from the leaders in the industry like Nvidia. Now look, in Nvidia's defense, they have a more generalized solution. They weren't making a chip for Tesla. Tesla made a chip for Tesla. This just gives you an understanding of the level of vertical integration Tesla's willing to go to. If they need a solution and it isn't available elsewhere, they will make it themselves and in doing so, probably make something better than anyone else has been able to do. We also have uh, a, the Tesla Dojo system, which is a, a training system, um, and that's intended to be able to process uh, vast amounts of video data uh, to improve the training for the AI system. So. Uh, we've, the, the, the Dojo system, um, and, and that's like a, a FP16 uh, training system, is my, primarily uh, constrained by heat um, and by communication between the chips. Um, and so we're developing uh, new buses and new sort of heat re um, re uh, heat rejection or, or co cooling systems uh, that enable uh, a very high Terra up, a very high up, more than Terra, a very high operation computer um, that that way will be able to process video data effectively. Dojo is possibly Tesla's most and least exciting technology. If you're super into nerdy stuff, you're into AI, man, this is a game changer. From the outside, cool, whatever, it's some training. But here's the thing. This system is being designed so these mountains, this colossal amount of data can just come in automatically be labeled and used to train the AI without people needing to be manually involved in the process, at least at a very minimum. This is again another flex on Tesla's software skills. And to be honest, I don't think many other automakers who are trying to pursue autonomy will even be at this stage yet because they don't have the volume of data to bring in. So it's pointless. This really is an illustration of just how far ahead Tesla are on full self-driving. The fact that they not only have this colossal amount of data coming in from their huge fleet over a million vehicles strong, but on top of that, they're at a point now where they're like, man, we've got so much data. What do we do with it? Let's try and automatically label, make things more efficient and streamline the training process. The closest thing that competitors are doing at the moment is running simulations with data. But as we know, a simulation is a scaled down, inefficient, imperfect version of the real world. You're never to get the same quality of data or those edge cases in simulated data. In short, Tesla's lead in full self-driving is unassailable and they're continuing to innovate. That lead is accelerating. Mark my words, Tesla has one autonomy. When it happens, I do not know, but they will be first to fully autonomous vehicles. No, I'm not talking about in geofence pre-mapped areas with training wheels. I mean a vehicle that you can drop on any road on planet Earth and it can drive you safely to your destination. Tesla has won that. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan, this is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. And don't forget your free stocks with Weeble and Stake. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can continue creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description and you can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching, so thanks again.